Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. The outfit designer is one of the best quality of life features that has been added to Star Wars The Old Republic since the game was released. The outfit designer is a way of adding a costume on top of your armor. Your armor is the pieces of gear that make sure you don't die in battle, but the costume is just the way your character looks, and you can change your armor in and out without having your costume be affected. To edit an outfit for your character, press C to open your character sheet, or head to your character sheet in the menu under an icon of a person. The outfit designer is a small tabs on the right hand side of the panel. You can have up to 16 outfits on every character and you get the first one for free, so go ahead and try it out. To add new armor pieces to your costume, to your outfit, click on the tab. If this is your very first outfit, You'd press the number 1 tab and you can drag and drop armor from your inventory into the costume slot. If you want to switch into your new outfit, into your new costume, just double click on the tab that you want to wear, in this case, tab 1, and you'll see that if you switch out your armor underneath, there's no problems, your character still looks super cool while still retaining all the stats from your armor. The best part about the outfit designer is that you can wear almost any type of armor, even if it's not one that would be good for your character in battle. You can wear armor that has a green border and is underpowered. You can wear gear you got when you were leveling on Tython or Korriban. You can wear gear that's light, medium, or heavy. And you can even wear gear that's just plain silly or doesn't even have any stats. Gear that has no stats attached to it is usually referred to as cosmetic gear. It's just for looks. A majority of the cartel market and cartel pack gear is considered cosmetic armor. And if you find a piece of armor that's empty and has no statistics, it's not worthless. You can either use it in your outfit designer as is, or you can add stats to it by adding modifications to it. There are four main ways to get new cosmetic gear. You can earn it, craft it, get it through chance, or buy it. A majority of the armor in the game can be found on the GTN, the Galactic Trade Network, and bought from other players. When you want to give your character a new look, this is one of the easiest places to start looking. Outfits on the GTN come from many sources, crafting, drop from enemies, from the cartel market, or from cartel packs. But in the end, they're pieces of armor that other players are able and willing to sell. If you want to hunt the GTN for armor, I recommend to head to the fleet, then on the GTN search for armor, and then search for the specific piece you're looking for, in this case, maybe chest piece. You can then sort the armor by price, and look through everything that's for sale on your server, from cheapest to most expensive. Some pieces of armor can be bought for as low as 1,000 credits, while others can be in the tens of millions of credits. If you want to filter out some of the less rare items, you can set the rarity to custom. You can even set a price range if you're on a budget. While browsing the GTN, you'll notice that many of the items have a shiny cartel market symbol on them in the corner. These items are either originally from the cartel market or cartel packs, which are bought with cartel coins. Subscribers get free cartel coins every month, and you can also buy cartel coins on the side with real money. Some cartel market armors can be directly purchased from the cartel market, while others are only found in special cartel packs that have a random chance of containing them. Some players open up cartel packs hoping for specific rare items, then sell the items on the GTN. If you have cartel coins and are really wanting an expensive piece of armor on the GTN, I recommend buying the cartel packs and selling them unopened on the GTN so you don't have to worry about the RNG, the random chance, of the cartel packs. All cartel market items can usually be worn by even level 1 characters. But keep in mind, cartel market items are usually only cosmetic. You can't buy any endgame gear with statistics from the cartel market. There's also a useful feature attached to cartel market items called collections. The collection system allows you to collect an entire set of armor and then pay cartel coins so all the characters on your account get a free copy. For example, if you get all the pieces of the Visus Mar set from cartel packs or the GTN, you could then pay cartel coins and wear it on all of your characters. The only catch is that you need to have all the pieces of the set. You can't have just the chest or the headpiece. Collections also work with many other items like speeders and weapons. The only downside is that weapons aren't available in the outfit designer. That means your weapon that you use for battle, the one that actually has statistics in it, 
is the same weapon you'll wear in all of your outfits and costumes. The second most available type of gear on the GTN is crafted gear, which you can actually craft for yourself once you level up your crafting skills. You can start crafting by heading to the Strongholds and Crew Skills section of the fleet and speaking to either an armor mech or synth weaving trainer. Synth weavers lean towards crafting armor for Jedi and Sith, while armor mechs craft armor for smugglers, troopers, agents, and bounty hunters. Keep in mind, you can always wear this gear cosmetically as well. Doesn't matter if you're a Jedi wearing smuggler's armor. The last type of gear you can get in the game is very special. It cannot be bought or traded. This is gear you actually have to earn for yourself. And these are kind of like the secret armors available in the game and the really impressive ones to be wearing. Reputation gear can only be earned by upping your reputation with various factions across the galaxy. You can view your reputation by going to your reputation panel, which is located in your legacy panel under the icon of a little person on the main menu. You can only wear certain types of reputation armor if you've gotten to the higher reputation ranks with these different groups. These are really armors you have to earn and work on, sometimes over weeks at a time, and sometimes for the ones where the events only come around once a month, it can take you months just to get a certain piece of armor. There's also social gear, which is a really neat type of armor that was added at the beginning of the game but was never updated since. Social armor is a type of armor that you can only wear if you upgrade your social points. Social points are gained by doing things with other people. You can usually get them through questing with friend or operations or flashpoints. Pretty much anything that has a multi-person cutscene in it is guaranteed to grant social points. There's some really unique sets available in the later social gear tiers too. Another type of gear you can earn is from the Eternal Championship, a set of difficult fights designed for solo players. You can start the Eternal Championship after level 60, after the ninth chapter of Knights of the Fallen Empire storyline. After the ninth chapter, you can also start bolstering your alliance by providing your allies alliance crates earned through repeatable heroics. Different heroics reward different types of alliance crates, and each type of alliance crate, when turned in, has a chance of rewarding you different types of armor. There are a lot of really attractive sets available in these random crates, not to mention you earn credits from doing the heroics in the first place. The only problem is if you're looking for a specific piece, you might not get it until your 21st crate, or you might never see it at all. If you've managed to get your way into the Odessan base, there's also a really cool set of Scions armor available for credits from a vendor in the Smuggler's area. The new Galactic Command system, which is exclusive to subscribers who are on a level 70 character, also drops cosmetic gear and gear with stats, both of which can be used in the outfit designer. The cosmetic gear without any stats can be bought and sold on the GTN, but the gear with stats cannot be bought or sold. The only way to get it is through the Galactic Command system, by chance when you open a Galactic Command crate, or earned through PvP, Galactic Starfighter, or dropped in operations. Attached to the Galactic Command system is the Dark vs. Light system, which sometimes earns you Dark Tokens or Light Tokens. You can see how many you have in the Currency tab of your inventory. The Dark vs. Light vendors in the Supply section of the fleet have two very special outfits you can earn with these tokens. There's also some really cool animated armor in those vendors as well. There's also a very special type of armor called Legacy Armor. Unlike normal armor, which is bound to your character once you equip it or use in the outfit designer, Legacy Armor can be shared between all your characters. If you earn a piece of Legacy Gear on your main character, you could then send it over to your other characters to use too. Legacy Gear is marked with a small shield icon in the corner of its item icon. Once you've gotten some really cool cosmetic armor into your outfit designer slots, you can customize it even more with dyes. Dyes can be crafted or come from the cartel market. Either way, you can find most dyes on the GTN or craft your own, of course. Just be careful. Dyes are one use, and once you put them into an armor, they cannot be recovered again and put in another piece. A really cool function that you can use with dyes is have the same chest piece and dye it two different colors with two different outfit slots. Let's say you get a really cool piece of armor, maybe a chest piece, and it would be too expensive to buy a second copy, or impossible to actually get again. You can stamp the piece of armor into two different outfit slots, and then each outfit slot, put a different die, and you'll have the same chest piece, maybe in a really cool white, and maybe a really cool red, that can use any time you want to switch back and forth very easily with the outfit designer. 
Just keep in mind, with this method, if you ever override that outfit slot with a different piece of armor, your die stamp piece will be gone forever and your die will have been wasted. There's an incredible amount of customization you can do to your character in-game, so don't be afraid to experiment. Just because you're locked into a class doesn't mean you have to dress like one. You could play as a Jedi who has turned to the dark side and shunned the simple robes of the Jedi Order. You could play as a trooper who's left Havoc Squad and started their own mercenary group and ditched the Republic-issued armor. Maybe your character's an explorer or a noble, and you'd rather them look like that than a bounty hunter in heavy armor. There's also a lot of beautiful, interesting, and vintage armors out there to dress your characters up in, too. Armors from Knights of the Old Republic, as well as Star Wars The Old Republic comics. Some players also dress their characters up thematically as they fly to different planets. You're going to want warmer clothes when you head to Hoth, and maybe something a little more formal when you head to Alderaan to speak with the royal houses. Don't be afraid to mix and match sets. With 16 outfit slots, there's space to save a look for every occasion. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Academy. If you want to show your support for this series, or to have new Sotarista videos show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel.